Welcome back to TK Tennis. Let's review the situation surrounding Yannick Sinner's failed drug test and see whether there's any substance behind those who are complaining the loudest. Like always, I'm going to call a spade a spade. So let's get up to speed on the facts of what happened. Back in March at Indian Wells at the Masters 1000 event, Yannick Sinner was notified that he failed a drug test for a substance known as Clostabol. He was then given another drug test, which he also failed for the same substance. What was most unusual about this case is that he was given a provisional suspension, meaning he was allowed to continue to play on tour while the investigation took place. Additionally, this was done in private without any public notification until just before the start of the U.S. Open. So then there are really only two questions that need to be asked. How much of Clostabol was found in the system? And could it have any impact on his performance? So we learned there was one billionth of a gram or one picogram of Clostabol. And it's an extremely small amount, far below the threshold needed to have any physiological or performance enhancing effects in a human. Now, some people might say, well, maybe he was doping all along and had more Clostabol in his system prior to being tested. Well, that doesn't have any merit either. The simple fact is that ATP players are drug tested 10 to 20 times per year. And for the highest ranked players, it's known that they get tested oftentimes more than 20 times per year. Roger Federer, Nadal, Djokovic have been often tested as much as 25 to 30 times per year. So the next logical question would be, why was Yannick given a provisional sentence? No matter how small the amount of an illegal substance, shouldn't you get banned anyway? And this is why this case was quite different. After the team was notified of the initial failed first drug test, they had a suspicion on where this may have happened. During the tournament at Indian Wells, Yannick Sinner's physio, which you can see right here, was seen with a bandage and a cut that happened on his pinky finger. And he treated his pinky finger with a lotion from Italy that's known to contain Clostabol. And this was clearly highly irresponsible by the physio because this is the same physio that does treatments on Yannick Sinner. So when they learned about the failed drug test, they had a hunch of where it may have came from and where this contamination into Yannick's system's body came from. And that's exactly what the investigation concluded, and that Yannick Sinner was not at fault, and therefore he was cleared of any wrongdoing. Isn't that the way this system is supposed to work? Well, not if you're Nick Kyrgios or Denis Shapiralov. They don't believe it should work like that. After it became public that Yannick Sinner was cleared, Nick Kyrgios in particular led the chorus of not agreeing with the decision. His tweet was, ridiculous. Whether it was accidental or planned, you get tested twice with a banned steroid substance. You should be gone for two years. Your performance was enhanced. Does anyone think that Nick Kyrgios could actually say this in good faith? If the tables were reversed and this happened to Nick Kyrgios when he was playing, and it was a small amount of an illegal substance that was accidentally ingested. Do you think he would actually agree with this and he would just want to be gone for two years? This is not genuine and in good faith. And for him to say your performance was enhanced, well, that is flatly false and untrue. The thing you always need to remember about Nick Kyrgios, Nick Kyrgios simply is a disruptor. And his default position is that if you tell him he should act a certain way or say a certain a certain thing, he will do exactly the opposite. And if you need to know anything else about Nick Kyrgios's character, after Sinner won the U.S. Open, Nick Kyrgios posted a photo of, of himself and Anna Kalinskaya from the past when he was dating her and basically said second serve, implying that Sinner is getting his leftovers. And then there's Mr. Irrelevant himself, Denis Shapiralov. He tweeted, different rules for different players basically implying that because Yannick Sinner was number one in the world, that he was treated differently. Instead of jumping to conclusions, maybe Nick Kyrgios and Denis Shapiralov would have been better served looking into the case and seeing why it was handled the way that it was. But in order to do that, you need to have good judgment. And the fact is that both Nick Kyrgios and Denis Shapiralov have an entire career of showing poor judgment. And if you need proof, here's just one example of when Denis Shapiralov takes a ball and fires it directly into the face of a chair umpire. Ah! 
And here's another example. Shut the f so what are the two key takeaways of this case? Well, I think there are two. The first one is the facts of this case seem to support that this was handled in a responsible manner and came out with the right outcome. The second one is these two individuals have no credibility. Remember, people always tell you and show you who they are. You just need to watch and listen. And call a spade a spade. And here's actually my biggest gripe about the situation, is that even though Sinner was totally cleared of any wrongdoing, is that he still forfeited $325,000 in prize money and 400 ranking points. Now, it's not that he can't afford it, and he's number one in the world by a wide margin, so he can even afford the loss of 400 ranking points. But the problem I have with it is this sends mixed signals. If he was cleared of any wrongdoing, then why should he incur a penalty whatsoever? Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next days.